the Palm Beach Civic Association brings you Palm Beach TV, the island's only newscast. We're sponsored by the Fortin Foundation of Florida. Our mission is to inform town residents about the unique challenges of island life and to highlight the actions and achievements of our leaders and the dynamic people who live here. Now the news. Welcome to Palm Beach TV, I'm Wendy Rutledge. We are all of course saddened and perhaps even a little shocked at the level of devastation being faced by the west coast of Florida in the wake of Hurricane Ian, in particular on Sanibel Island, which is a barrier island just like Palm Beach, which begs the question, could the barrier island of Palm Beach ever face that same level of destruction should it be directly hit by such a powerful hurricane. After all, it is a 12-mile narrow strip of land sandwiched between the Atlantic Ocean and the Lake Worth Lagoon. Water on both sides, just like Sanibel. Kind of a worst case scenario where everything came together, where we had a slow moving, high end category four hurricane that got big, a bigger storm moves more water, and it's doing it during high tide over the king tides. And you put it all together, and it's extremely dangerous. And we're going to get a ton of water. You're going to see a lot of storm surge flooding video in the days to come out of southwest Florida. The last 14 days is, has really been kind of an, an emotional and mental roller coaster. You know, going from uh, disbelief to frustration to shock. Former Deputy Palm Beach Town Manager Jay Boudichoir, now City Manager for Naples, sharing his firsthand experience of the destruction wrought by Hurricane Ian. You just cannot understand it until you see the ocean um, disappear uh, the shoreline and touch the bay on the other side and your entire city is underwater. That, that was Naples. If Naples got hammered by storm surge, its barrier island neighbor, Sanibel, got destroyed. Palm Beach Coastal Manager Rob Weber says it's the topography along the West Coast and Gulf of Mexico that makes it so vulnerable to surge. On the West Coast, you've got much, much flatter uh, shoreline and the, it gets you know, get to go many miles out to get into deeper water. So when a storm surge is pushing up, it's got nowhere to go. It's pushing right up onto the, onto the shore. The barrier island that is Palm Beach, however, is surrounded by deeper water and the Gulf Stream, as well as other natural protection. We're on a ridge, um, the Anastasia Formation, the rock formation that the, the island is actually built on. Um, is not just sand and, and we've got you can see in some sections of the northern part of the town where you're driving through rock on either side of the road. Though there is little doubt that flooding and storm surge could inundate the island under similar conditions, town leaders have years of planning and preparation in place. For the past 33 years I've been with the town, um, we've traveled to all the hurricane events around the state since the uh, hurricane, going back as far as Hurricane Andrew. That information gathering from past storms in play again with Hurricane Ian, where engine and EMS crews from Palm Beach Fire Rescue joined the early rescue and recovery efforts on the West Coast. So those uh, crews that we sent over there did things, saw things, experienced things that we could never simulate here for them. Uh, and they will come back with experience and make them much more prepared for that kind of event. God forbid it should ever happen here in the town. First-hand experience in post-storm recovery, just one of two reasons why Palm Beach Fire Rescue pitched in. It's the right thing to do, right? It's absolutely the right thing to do. If, if we're us, what would we want? Fire Rescue posting this video of firefighters pushing out one of their fire trucks after the bay was flooded by the storm surge. I think they made some mistakes. Town Manager Bluen describing his surprise that some West Coast fire departments did not move their vehicles to higher ground. We move our assets. Um, so we move all of our police vehicles that are not in use. We move them to like the fourth floor uh, out of harm's way. Some of them we move across the bridge and the same thing with the, the fire trucks and the fire apparatus. So when we can respond, we're not without trucks or vehicles or other equipment that we're gonna need uh, to do search and recovery or just go back into re recovery mode. So strong preparation, which includes the vulnerability study, 
and the implementation plans provided by consultants Woods Hole, along with several significant natural topographical advantages, combined these just might be some of the factors working in favor of the resilience of Palm Beach. What we experienced in storm surge um, Palm Beach would have seen nothing like that. As is so often the case, community-minded Palm Beachers are stepping up to help. The war in Ukraine um, forced us to look at different partners than we normally do. Um, typically what we've done is look for local partners, helping in communities. But in Ukraine, we didn't have that option because it's not in this country, it's far away. And so, so the hardest part of our job here isn't um, raising the money, it's where do you give the money that you know that it's going to be impactful and used to the best of its ability. So we were forced to come up with these sort of new partners, World Central Kitchen, AmeriCares, Global Empowerment Mission. Um, and we were so pleased, we have been pleased. Uh, we raised for that effort um, a little bit over $2 million. Um, and we have been incredibly just awestruck by the work that they're doing in the neighboring countries of Ukraine. And so when they were already in um, on the west coast of Florida, it was a natural fit for us. Now, what we're also looking at, uh, Jay Budishwar, who you know, um, is in Naples. And there are a couple communities in Naples, uh, very much poverty areas that have been completely wiped out. So we're looking at them to find out where we can help and fit into that picture. That wraps it up for us. And as always, we thank you for watching. If you can, why don't you join us October 18th for our elections forum featuring keynote speaker, Supervisor of Elections, Wendy Sartori Link. And we'll see you next time right here on Palm Beach TV, a production of the Palm Beach Civic Association. Palm Beach TV is a production of the Palm Beach Civic Association. We thank our sponsor, the Fortin Foundation of Florida, and encourage you, our viewers, to let us know how we can provide news coverage that best serves our members and residents.